What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to find the area of a regular polygon. And I'm going to go over three examples starting with this one right here. So as you can see we have a regular polygon. This thing has eight sides so it's just an octagon. And we're also given two dimensions, right? So we're given the length from the center of the polygon to one of the edges or the vertices as 19.6 inches. And we're also given the length of one of the sides as 15 inches. Now, in order to find the area of a regular polygon, we can use this formula right here. So it's just a is equal to one half times little a times n times s, where a is the total area, little a is the apothem, n is the number of sides, and s is the side length. All right. And I've written them up here just so you can refer back to them. So in order to find the total area, let's find each of these three variables starting with the little a, right? The apothem. Now, if you don't remember what that is, the apothem is simply the distance from the center of the polygon down to one of the sides of the polygon and it hits it at the midpoint. Now, when it hits it at the midpoint, it creates a right angle or a 90 degree angle with that side. Okay, so as you can see, what we've basically created here is a right triangle. So that's gonna help a little bit, right? So we have one of the lengths on this right triangle. It looks like it's the hypotenuse, right? 19.6 inches. And we're looking for this distance right here, the apothem, I'll just label that as X. Is there a way that we can figure out what this distance is down here? Well, there is, right? Because we know that each of the sides are 15 inches long. So if this whole side is 15 inches long, then we know half of that right, this half, we could say, is 7.5 inches long. Okay, great, so now on this right triangle, we know two sides, we know the hypotenuse, and we know one of the shorter legs. So we just need to find this missing leg right here. Now in order to find the missing side of a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, which if you don't remember, that's a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared where A and B are the two shorter sides, and C is the hypotenuse. So let's plug in what we know. So we know one of the shorter sides, right? It's 7.5, so let's just plug that in for A right here. So we're gonna get 7.5 squared plus this shorter side, which we don't know, it's just labeled as X, so we'll just leave it as X squared, and that's equal to the hypotenuse, which is 19.6 squared. So if you multiply these out, we're gonna get 56.25 plus x squared is equal to 384.16. So solving for x squared right here, we can get rid of this 56.25 from both sides. Those cancel out. So we get that x squared is equal to 327.91. Now, in order to solve for x and get rid of this exponent, we can simply take the square root of both sides. So then on this side, those cancel out. So we get that x is equal to the square root of 327.91, which is approximately 18.11, all right? So that's the length of this side right here, right? The apothem, 18.11. So now that we know what little a is equal to, Let's plug it into our formula. So here we're gonna get that the total area is equal to one half times the little a, which is 18.11. Now let's find n and s. So again, n is the number of sides. Well, we have an octagon, so we have eight sides. And times the side length. Well, we know that the side length is 15, all right? Now, if you multiply this out, you'll get that this is equal to approximately one -third thousand eighty six point five zero I uh, just did that in my head <laughs> just kidding okay and what are our units uh, we're working with inches right so our units are gonna be inches squared right don't forget your little square exponent right because we're talking about area boom all right here's the next example so again as you can see we have another regular polygon here and this time we have nine sides on this guy. And we're also given the distance from the center of the polygon to the vertex, right? It's given as four. And we're also given the same thing over here, right? It's four. And it looks like the apothem here is drawn in, but the length isn't given, all right? So we're gonna have to figure out what that is. 
So here, we're obviously not given a ton of information. So one thing that could be helpful is to find an angle and specifically a central angle. So a central angle on a regular polygon goes from the center to a vertex and it goes from the center to the next vertex, okay? So this whole angle right here is a central angle, okay? And the way that you find those measures is a fairly simple formula. So a central angle on a regular polygon is equal to 360 divided by n, where n is the number of sides. So since we have nine sides here, we can say that the central angle for each of these guys is gonna be 360 divided by nine, which is equal to 40 degrees. Okay, so this total angle right here is again 40 degrees. So if we know that this apothem cuts this thing in half, that means each of these are 20 degrees. Okay, and I'm only gonna keep one in uh, just to clarify what we're gonna do here. So as you can see, we again have our right triangle. We're also given, or we now know, one of the other angles, right, aside from this 90 degree angle. And we also know the lengths of one of the sides, right, the hypotenuse. Okay, so the first thing we wanna find here is the length of the apothem, right? That's what we wanna find first. So let's just label this side, since we don't know what this, this length is, let's label it as x. Now, in order to find the length of this side, we're going to need to use a little bit of trig. Okay, and before doing that, let's just label the three sides of our triangle in relation to this angle that we just found. So first of all, the easy one to identify would be this side right here of this right triangle, right? Because that's just the hypotenuse, okay? Now this side right here is going to be the adjacent side. And we know that because it's right next to the angle, right? It's touching the angle right here. And then that means this last side of our little right triangle must be the opposite side. And that makes sense because it's on the opposite side of this angle, right? So we have adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse. So which trig function are we gonna to wanna to use to find the length of this apothem? Well, again, this is the adjacent side, right? We know that this is the hypotenuse. Which trig function relates adjacent sides and hypotenuses? Well, if you write out the acronym SOCATOA, we can see that it's cosine, right? That relates the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, right? So we wanna use the cosine of this angle, the 20 degree angle. So we're going to say the cosine of that 20 degree angle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, right? What's the adjacent side? Well, we don't know what it is, right? It's just labeled as X. So we're just gonna leave it as X, right? What's the hypotenuse? Well, it's given right here as four, okay? Now to solve for x, we need to get rid of this four, and we can do that by multiplying both sides by four, right? so those cancel out. So here we get that x is equal to four times the cosine of 20, which is equal to approximately 3.76. All right, so that's the length of this apothem right here. I'll just write it over here, 3.76. All right, now the last thing that we have to do is identify our other two variables, right? So n is the number of sides. So we already know what that is, that's gonna be nine, and the side length. We don't know what that is, okay? Now, in order to figure out what the length of this full side is, we can, again, use the Pythagorean theorem, right? Because we know the length of this side, we know the length of this side, so we just don't know the length of this short little side, right? So we could use the Pythagorean theorem, or we could just use trig again, which I think is gonna be a little bit easier in this case, since we already kind of worked everything out. So this is the distance or the length that we're looking for, right? Now remember this apothem is the adjacent side, this long side over here is the hypotenuse, and this side over here is the opposite side. Okay, so which trig function relates the opposite side? And let's just use the hypotenuse since that number is a lot easier to work with, four, okay? So the trig function relating the opposite side and the hypotenuse is sine. So again, we're gonna take the sine of this angle right here. So we're gonna say the sine of 20 is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. We don't know what the opposite side is. So we're gonna label that guy, uh, let's just call him Y this time. And the hypotenuse is four. So to isolate Y again, we can get rid of this denominator by multiplying both sides by four. Those cancel out. So we get that y 
right, the opposite side, is equal to 4 times sine of 20, which is equal to approximately 1.37, okay? So that's the length of this short side right here. But remember, what we want is the full length over here. So what we found right here was just half, right? So what we have to do is just multiply it by 2 to find this other half. So 1.37 times 2 is going to be 2.74, right? So that's the distance of this full side right here. All right, so now in order to find the area, we could just plug and chug everything. So we're going to say that the total area is equal to 1 half times the apothem, which again is 3.76. The number of sides are 9, and the length of each side is 2.74. Now, if you plug all that into your calculator, you'll get that the total area is equal to approximately 46.3. Here, we don't have any units, so I'm just going to say units squared. Boom. All right, here's the last problem we're going to go over. So, as you can see, we have another reg regular polygon with six sides this time, and all we're given is the length of one of the sides. Oh my god, that sucks. So. What we're gonna have to do here is again, is just try and find something, all right? So one of the easier things that we can always find is a central angle. So in this case, let's just find the central angle of this guy right here. So again, to find a central angle, the formula is gonna be equal to 360 divided by N, which is the number of sides. So here we get 360 divided by six, which is equal to 60 degrees, all right? So this central angle is 60 degrees. And I'm actually going to move that because, remember, we have to also find the apothem, all right? And that's the distance from the center of the polygon to one of the sides, and it hits the side at the midpoint, right? So we're going to draw a line like so, and that creates a 90-degree angle. So remember, this whole central angle is 60 degrees, but we just cut it in half, right? So now we know that each of these are 30 degree angles. All right, now we're getting somewhere. So we found a couple angles here. Now we also know the total length, right? It's given as seven, but we can also split this up into little right triangles. So we can say that this length down here is half of seven, or in other words, 3.5. And this distance right here is also 3.5. All right, great. Now let's try and find the length of the apothem. So to find this length right here, we're again going to have to use some trig. So again, we found this angle right here, right? It's 30 degrees. Now in relation to this angle, let's identify our three sides. So the distance from the center to this vertex, it looks like that's the longest side, right? So this would be the hypotenuse. Now this side over here where the three and a half is, that's on the opposite side of where the angle is, right? So that's going to be this 3.5 is the opposite side. And that means this last side where the apothem is must be the adjacent side. And this is what we're looking for, right? So we'll just label it as X. Okay, so we have an angle, we have the opposite side, and we're looking for the adjacent side. So the trig function that relates the opposite side and the adjacent side would be tangent, right? So ka toa. So here we're going to want to take the tangent of this angle, 30 degrees, and set it equal to O over A, right? The opposite, which is 3.5, over the adjacent, which we don't know, right? That's what we're looking for, so that'll stay as X. All right, and I'm going to move this over a little bit. So as you can see, we have the x in the denominator. It's going to be easier if we just move it to the numerator. So let's multiply both sides by x like that. So on this side, they cancel out. And on the left side, we get x times the tangent of 30 is equal to 3.5. Now to solve for x over here, we can get rid of this tangent of 30 by dividing both sides by the tangent of 30. So on this side, those cancel out. So we're left with x is equal to approximately 6.06, .06, right? So now we know what a is, little a, in our formula. Okay, so let's plug it in. So we're gonna get that the total area is equal to 1 half times
times the apothem, which is 6.06, .06, times the number of sides, which is 6, times the length of each side, which is 7 in this case, right? Now, if you plug this into your calculator, you'll get that the total area is approximately 127.31. Again, we don't have units here, so we'll just say units squared. So if you found the video helpful, make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below.